it's Kara here and I wanted to put together a video to encourage you as you do the GAPS intro diet. So I know it can look a little daunting to start, but I think once you get started and you see how to make the different recipes that are in the GAPS intro book, you'll be pleasantly surprised at how well you do and how much better you feel so quickly. As we're preparing to do the GAPS introduction diet, you're going to want to sort of clean out your cupboards, get rid of any tempting food that's not on the GAPS intro diet, or at least box it up so it's not tempting for you. As we do our GAPS prep, I'm going to show you how to make sauerkraut because sauerkraut is one of the least expensive and easiest ferments that we have, and we're going to start adding our sauerkraut juice in to get those probiotics pretty early in the intro diet. So here we go as we learn how to make sauerkraut. It's so fast, you'll be surprised. So here's our cabbage for our sauerkraut, and I'm only going to make half a cabbage worth today. We're gonna remove the stem. Cut it in half. And I'm only making half of a cabbage worth of sauerkraut today because we already have some in our fridge. I just wanted to show, some, show it to you. So we're gonna remove the core by cutting the stem out of the middle. Then we're just gonna slice up our cabbage. And if you use a combination of red and green cabbage, it will make fuchsia sauerkraut, which is beautiful. We're just going to put it as we cut it into a bowl. So now we have our shredded cabbage in here and that's all that's in our bowl. We're going to add one teaspoon or one tablespoon to half a cabbage. We'll add one tablespoon of sea salt and this is unrefined sea salt. So it has those trace minerals. We're just going to sprinkle it over and this will wilt our cabbage so that it is easier for it to release the juice, which we need to create an air-free environment to ferment in. So we're just going to leave this like that. You can cover it with a dishcloth if um, you're concerned about dust or something getting in it. But we're just going to leave it like this for an hour. And these, the core from the cabbage is, you can add this to your chicken stock to give it a little bit of flavor and a little bit of nutrition. Um, you, a lot of us just keep a bag of scraps that we add to our stock as we cook it as we go along. Now our cabbage has just been wilting for about an hour. If you go like this, you can see that it's releasing some of its juice and that'll make it easier to pound. So we have our wide mouth jar. Um, these are just called wide mouth mason jars. You can use any jar that has a tight fitting airtight lid. Um, and we're just going to pack it in here. It already has some salt on it. So just use clean hands. Put it in your jar. If you did a whole cabbage, you're gonna have twice as much cabbage as I do, obviously. We're just gonna to top it off with half a teaspoon of salt. The salt is what inhibits the bad bacteria from growing until the good bacteria can take over. And if you have a successful start already, a successful culture already, whether it's Bubby's brand or another brand from the store or sauerkraut that you've made previously, you can add just about a teaspoon of the juice from that. It doesn't have to be sauerkraut juice. It can be pickle juice like Bubby's pickles. So if you add just a teaspoon of that juice, then that'll get the good bacteria starting already so they can take over and the bad bacteria don't have a chance to grow. But I'm just going to assume that you don't have anything other than cabbage and water today and I'm going to show you how we just mix our kraut with cabbage and water. So here I have a small mason jar. You can use anything that will fit in there and we're just going to pound this down. And it should release juice. If you're not really getting a ton of juice out of it, go ahead and just add water, filtered water, until it gets to the top. You don't want to use tap water and you don't want to use fluoridated water. Um, we're avoiding fluoride while we're on the GAPS diet. And so if you have a water filter, then use that. Um, if you don't have a water filter and you're on city water that has chlorine in it, you're going to want to go ahead and buy some spring water for your ferments. So we're just going to add a little bit of water in here until it comes to the top. See, it's well over the top there. And that creates an anaerobic environment that also helps prevent the bad stuff from growing. And here is your lid, and we are just going to let this sit. It's airtight. We did, um, we did 
it's just finger tight. It doesn't have to be super tight. We definitely don't boil it. We let it sit on the counter or in a dark place, like in a cupboard for five days now, and it will continue to ferment and then it'll be ready to eat. So here we have our sauerkraut and this is after about five days. You can see how the green has turned um, kind of a yellow color and it's nice and soft. There's the liquid in there. And then when you smell it, it should smell kind of sour and a little bit salty, but it shouldn't smell like bad, like, sorry to be graphic, but it shouldn't smell like poop or puke. Um, so either of those smells means that it's gone bad, but if it smells just a little bit sour and it's um, this color, it's not moldy, then that means it's good. And so you can just use this, um, first we use just the juice and you can just kind of press the back of a spoon into the sauerkraut to get the juice out. And you'll end up using, um, you can, if you need to get more juice, you can go ahead and re-ferment this, just add some filtered water to it. Um, and just maybe half a teaspoon of sea salt, just a little bit of sea salt, and then let this ferment on the counter to get more of that juice if you get stuck on the stage where you're not actually eating the sauerkraut, but you're having the juice in your soups for probiotics, then that's a great way to make more sauerkraut juice. And it has those good probiotics in it that we want to nourish our gut flora. And with sauerkraut, and I'll talk about this a little bit more in the die-off reaction video, um, if you're feeling like you're having die-off reactions, go ahead and just take the sauerkraut back out. You might not be ready for probiotics yet. Um, even the sauerkraut juice has a bunch of billions of probiotics in each spoonful. So if your body is not ready to handle those yet and you're killing off too much of the bad stuff, then by slowing down um, how much is killed by taking out the probiotics that are going to eat the bad bac bacteria, um, then you can kind of manage that die-off reaction a little bit better. I'm just following right along in this book, which you should have received in the mail or you will be receiving shortly. Um, and so we are just gonna start on stage one, where we are essentially eating, we're eating meat, which is boiled, vegetables, which are boiled, sea salt, and then we add in sauerkraut juice for the probiotics. So first I'm gonna start by showing you how to do intro chicken stock, which is very simple, but sometimes just seeing it in video helps you to realize exactly how simple it is. And you'll find that on the first day or two of gaps, you'll probably be pleasantly surprised at how good it tastes, even though it's just boiled meat and boiled veggies, veggies that we're able to add the sea salt to it really helps the flavor. And it's really the first day of gaps um, you'll probably be surprised at how easy it is. So here I'm going to show you how to make our GAPS chicken stock. So the first thing that we're going to start with is chicken stock because it's such a good gut healing, amino acid rich food. We're just going to put our chicken thighs in the bottom of our stock pot. And that's done. Throw away our package. If you have some herbs that you would like to use, you can put those in as well. We are going to be straining them out. Um, if you have ginger, ginger adds a nice flavor. This is just a little bit of ginger from a knob and these are available in pretty much every produce section of the grocery store. Fresh ginger and that just gives it a nice flavor. And here's some onion scraps and this will give it a nice rich color. So just scraps from onions or scraps from any vegetable that are gaps legal. No potatoes. Um, no starchy vegetables. Then we're gonna fill the pot with filtered water. And that's really all there is to it. And then we will simmer it for one hour. Um, intro chicken stock isn't simmered for very long. So we're just gonna use medium heat for about an hour and a half. Um, it'll take about half an hour to bring it up to a simmer. Um, and then we wanna simmer it covered for another hour. So here, here we have our chicken stock. I like to let it cool down until it's just warm to touch, just so that you're not pouring boiling liquid, which is kind of dangerous to do in the kitchen. It won't go bad, especially with the lid on it. You're not gonna get a bunch of um, bacteria from the air in it in just an hour or so that it takes to cool down until it's not super hot. Um, so we're just gonna strain it by pouring it through a colander. And so I just have a large bowl and I put my colander right inside and pour it through. And 
And then you can smell the ginger in there. If you put ginger, it smells delicious. Either way, it smells, my kids thought it smelled like pizza while it was cooking today. Um, and then just kind of let the drips go. Then I like to put that back there. And we're going to, I'll show you what to do with the chicken that we just took out that we've had boiling for an hour. So this is our stock. The intro stock is more blonde. It's, um, it's lighter in color than the stock if we brown the meat a lot beforehand. And then I like to pour this into just mason jars to easily add to soup and to heat up. Um, and then I do that over the, the sink so that if any spills, it doesn't make a huge mess on the counter. And it's just kind of a trick, like you'll learn how fast to pour based on what, jar, what um, bowl you're using to pour from so it doesn't spill all over. So this will probably be about four quarts. And lots of mason jars, but mason jars thankfully are inexpensive. So I just put them in the bottom of my sink there and pour, hopefully without spilling. Some of it is going to spill. Oops. Sometimes pouring faster helps it to spill less. And you might be a lot better at not spilling this than I am. I just lost probably about a quart of chicken stock. And then we're just gonna put lids on this and put it in the fridge. So I like these. These aren't watertight, so if you're gonna travel with these, make sure you put other lids on. Um, but these are great for the fridge and they're easy to clean. Then I'm just gonna rinse it off because I did make such a mess with that. So after our chicken stock has chilled, you can see the fat on top. And depending on your cut of meat, um, there'll be more fat. Some of the really fatty chicken, it, it'll be like a quarter inch or half an inch on the top of a jar of chicken stock. So you can use your spoon to remove it, and then you can use this to cook in on later stages of intro. It'll say cook in chicken fat, and that's what I mean, is it's the stuff that rises to the top of the jar. So from the chicken that we just made stock with, this is still good, and you can eat all this. You can eat the fat. I would actually encourage you to blend that into your soups. So I'm gonna put the fat in one bowl, or sorry, the skin in one bowl. Then we're gonna take off the meat, and this is all meat, this is thigh meat. And you can just eat this, you can add salt to it, or you can boil it. So just kind of feel anything that's tough is gonna to be too hard to chew. But the soft skin, you wanna blend into soups. When we're not on an intro and we're boiling these for longer, and um, we're boiling the chicken stock for longer, you can snap those bones in half and then you can put them in stock a second time through and the marrow will come out and into the stock. So I'm gonna reuse these bones um, and I'll just simmer, I'll take the vegetables and the herbs out, add any more that we have in the fridge and uh, reuse these bones again for stock again. Here's some more meat on here. Okay, so here's, this is the tendon on the end. And if you boil these longer, so on intro we're only supposed to boil the stock, it's meat stock, and we only boil it for an hour. But if you boil it for longer, these will get soft, and so you wanna put those, if they're soft, in with the, um, in with the skin. And some people in intro do boil their bones longer so that they can break them open and they can get the collagen out. But if you're following exactly what it says in the GAPS book, it's only supposed to be for an hour. So we have all of this meat and you can cube this up and put it in your, there's some hard stuff in there we're gonna take out. Um, you can cube this up, just dice it with a large chef knife. And then here's this that we can use the immersion blender or the regular blender to puree in some soups. Welcome to day two on the GAPS introduction diet. I hope that yesterday went really well for you and you didn't forget your Epsom salt bath last night. If you follow along in our book, there are checklists. I put this together actually for myself and then I cleaned it up a little bit for you. Um, I found that as we were going through the GAPS introduction diet, 
there were so many things to remember and with having to cook and having a child with autism, I definitely couldn't do it without a checklist. And based on the feedback I've gotten for you, from you, this is the same for you as well. So today for day two, we're going to make meat patties. And I'm gonna show you how I puree some carrots or cauliflower or any veggie that you can have on gaps and put it into ground beef. And this is what I did for my son who, he's now eight, but I did this when he was two. And he wouldn't eat vegetables voluntarily, but he would eat them if I sort of hid them in some meat. So this is introduction day two, and I'm gonna show you how to do the meat patties. So for day two, I'm gonna show you how to make simple meat patties. And to start, we are going to put a skillet and we're gonna start simmering some chicken stock because we cook all of our meats and vegetables till they're very, very soft in chicken stock on intro because it makes it very easy for us to digest. It's easy on our digestive system and we want our digestive system to have an easy time so that it can heal and rest. So I'm just, I'm in the intro book, it says three pounds of hamburger. So I'm just doing one pound of hamburger. So I'm gonna use one carrot and just a little bit of cauliflower. Um, I have you make a lot because you're pretty much eating the same thing all day. On intro, there aren't really specific uh, breakfast foods, lunch foods or dinner foods. Um, so we just go ahead and eat the same thing and realize that you can branch out later when your digestion is better. But for right now, we need to be eating something simple. And if you're tired and have brain fog, you probably don't want to make a whole bunch of different recipes. So I'm going to shred our carrot. And some people, if you know you have trouble digesting carrots, um, go ahead and skip the carrot part. If you know you have trouble with um, any of the veggies that I'm calling for, especially in these early days before your gut has had a chance to heal, um, then go ahead and just switch them with a veggie that you know you can handle. Carrots are good because kids, a lot of times kids will accept carrots. They're bright orange and sweet, but they don't have that high sugar. So I have our carrot. You can just do this in a food processor. You could just pulse the whole thing and it would be easy. So we're just getting these little crumbles here is what we're going for with the cauliflower. And we put the veggies in here because a lot of kids that won't accept any vegetables will if you hide them in meat. Cauliflower is high in sulfur, which our body needs to process phenols. Phenols are in all, most all foods. They're higher in some foods than others. And, so, and a lot of kids on the spectrum and a lot of people with gut problems react to phenols and high sulfur foods, which cauliflower, leeks, garlic, um, broccoli, egg yolk, once we introduce that, are all higher in sulfur and they can help us to process that. So we're just chopping this up a little bit as our chicken stock is heating over there. This is organic, local grass-fed meat. Um, beef is easier for me to find of really good quality in Montana, so we end up eating a lot more beef than chicken in our family. Um, that'll just kind of depend on what's easiest for you to find locally. And we're gonna add some sea salt. This is the unrefined sea salt. It has those trace minerals that we want. Thankfully, we can have sea salt on GAPS intro because it adds, it really boosts the flavor of the meat and the veggies, complements it well. Um, so we're not doing pepper, we're not doing any spices yet. We're doing pretty bland, but it's gonna taste good. And then we're gonna form this into patties and simmer it. We don't want it to brown because that's harder on our digestion. Our digestion. So we can just put that right in. And repeat for the rest of the patties. We'll repeat with the rest of the meat when those are done. So here are our meat patties. You can see that they've been simmering here and they're starting to be, they're about half cooked. 
They're not going to brown. We don't want them to brown. I think I've told you this a few times. Um, it's just kind of common to want our meat to brown, but we don't here. So we're just going to turn them over and let them simmer for another 10 minutes or so on the other side. And yours will cook faster or slower depending on how fat or how thick you made them. I made these pretty thick. So we're just going to let those keep simmering there. So here are boiled meat patties and you can see the orange in there is the carrots. We didn't brown them at all. You can kind of cut into them with the side of a spatula if you want to make sure they're cooked through. So we'll just remove these from the stock. They smell really good. And then this stock here, we don't want to throw it away, of course. Um, I want you to drink it. So we're just going to pour it. And we're just going to pour it into a mug. Enjoy that and then just like our soups we want to add crushed garlic to our stock so just get one clove of garlic crush it this is how I like to crush it just on the counter like that or you can just dice that up a little bit more finely with a knife just crush that in there the, the garlic has those good that good sulfur and it has antimicrobial properties that will help your gut kill off the bad bacteria and again if you're having die off I would also cut the garlic out it can be a little bit too powerful um, taste this if you want to add more sea salt you're welcome to add more sea salt we'll add our sauerkraut juice as well so sauerkraut remember like we talked about when we were making this if you're running low on juice we'll just stir that in um, you can add a little bit of filtered water and with some sea salt and let this culture on the counter and it'll still give all those good probiotics. The sauerkraut, the cabbage is supposed to have special benefits for nurturing the specific probiotics that are good for our guts. So here's our stock and our meat patties. Welcome to day three. I'm glad to have you here. Today is the day that you might be a little bit irritated with me. That's okay, I, I can take it. Um, to th day three to five are usually the hardest days and this is where people will either switch to full gaps because they're not handling it well or they will just push through and deal with the kind of blood sugar especially if you ate a high carb diet before we aren't eating very many carbs on gaps and your body has to learn how to adjust and um, use the fat for and use fat for energy today while well, you're not feeling so awesome we're just going to put some onions in the crock pot with our chicken stock that hopefully you still have some um, this is a super easy recipe and the onions kind of give us that sweet flavor that we might like um, and it's a really easy recipe to do so I'm going to show you how to do crock pot onions for day three so now we're going to make crock pot onions this is really simple I remember this on the first time we did intro on day two I put butternut squash soup there's, res there's a recipe in the intro book, but we haven't made that in video yet. But I put butternut squash soup in a thermos, took my, put this in the crock pot, took my kids to the zoo. So we went to the zoo with our thermos of butternut squash soup. We came home and we had these onions and my two-year-old, who we weren't doing gaps for, but he was on gaps, if that makes sense, because it's, I felt like it was a good thing for all of us to be on for a while. Um, my two-year-old ate like three whole onions and it surprised me because he normally was more of a meat person than a veggie person. So anyways, you can see that all you're doing is peeling these smaller onions. You could have them if they're big ones. Um, just cut them in half. You can save these skins, especially if you bought organic. Um, to make stock with later you would like if you want to throw them away because it's too overwhelming right now to bag up skins and put them in the fridge which I completely understand um, I totally understand that also your chicken stock will work just fine without the veggie scraps so 
we're just going to put those in there. Pour our pour our chicken stock over it. Add about a teaspoon of sea salt. Turn it on either low for eight hours or high for four to six hours. Put your lid on and then they will be ready. Um, you, can, you can fill the whole thing with onions depending on how hungry you are. Or you can do four. You do want to make sure that your you do want to make sure that your slow cooker is about half full um, or a little over half full or else it they could burn on the bottom. So that should be good to go. And hopefully you'll be pleasantly surprised like I was at how much my kids like them. Welcome to day four. You're doing great. I just really want to encourage you that it should start getting a lot better either by this afternoon or by tomorrow evening. Um, if you want to skip ahead, if you're feeling like this is not working for you, I encourage you to skip to stage two and add the raw egg yolk into your soup. Um, today we're going to make beef and broccoli soup, which you can stir in a raw egg yolk and see how you feel after that. If day four is not working for you, just go ahead and skip to day six where we allow the raw egg yolk. So here we go with our beef and broccoli soup. Welcome to day five. For day five, we are making some summer squash soup that we will stir an egg yolk into tomorrow. Or if you're doing egg yolks already, then the summer squash soup is good with the egg. Today we're gonna make summer squash soup. Uh, very easy, just chicken stock, water, summer squash, sea salt. And then tomorrow, I know you're gonna be excited about this, we get to add raw egg yolk to it. So I will show you how to do that tomorrow. So we just remove our ends. We want to keep the peel on. You can peel it. If you're having really hard digestive troubles, even still, you might want to peel your veggies. But most people will be able to keep the peel on, especially from summer squash. Winter squash, you definitely want to take the peel off. But summer squash, it's nice and soft, and it should, we're going to boil it for a while. So I like to put my veggies in first and then add my chicken stock because then it doesn't splash as you add them. I'm just going to cut them up so they can cook easily. We are going to boil these veggies very well so they are very soft and easy to digest. So normally we would probably only simmer this for 15 minutes and it'd be soft, but we're going to simmer it for gaps. We're going to simmer it for an hour until it's very soft. So here's that. We're going to turn our burner on. Add our chicken stock. You can, if this isn't covering your summer squash, it'll just depend on how much you made. Um, if it doesn't cover it, then you can go ahead and add another quart of water. We're going to add some sea salt. You can add sea salt at the end as well. We'll just do it now so we're done. And let that simmer. Since we're going to puree this soup, if you have some of that chicken skin, you go, can go ahead and just drop that in and it'll add. It looks gross. It'll be fine when you puree it. It'll continue absorbing that stock as we simmer it. And it will um, add in healthy fats and healthy amino acids. So we're just going to cover that and let that simmer for an hour. Also, you'll see that I'm using stainless steel in here and you don't want to be using nonstick. So even if you need to go to Walmart and buy a Walmart, I, some of my stuff is from Walmart. One of my saucepan or one of my skillets is from Walmart and it's a, it's great quality, but it was inexpensive. You want to be buying stainless steel because the nonstick, the black coated pans can put um, toxins into your soup and that's the last thing we want to do right now. We want to be minimizing our toxins as much as possible. So even if you just need to buy, I think when I started out, I still hadn't even bought a stock pot. I had a crock pot, one of these, and a large skillet. And that's plenty to do intro on and um, it will help 
reduce your toxic load, which is so important. So here's our squash soup, and you can see that the chicken skin has absorbed some of the stock. It's gotten softer, the squash is all soft. And we're just gonna puree it. And it makes a nice creamy soup without obviously any dairy. So there, we just have a nice creamy soup. Now we're going to do creamy cauliflower and this is kind of like a mashed potatoes. It's just a little change of paste from soups. But of course, just like everything else on intro, we are boiling this, buddy. I'm just gonna remove the leaves. And like I've said before, these recipes are all variable. So depending on how many people you are cooking for and how much you guys are eating by day six, which we're on, sometimes everyone is absolutely starving and you, you will go through like four heads of cauliflower. And sometimes people are like tired and lethargic and not interested in eating much. Um, and in that case, you will want to make a lot less. So that just depends on your individual situation. We're gonna cut these off, take the stem out and just put them right in here where we'll boil them. And then we will drain them, serve, we'll, we'll save the stock that we drained um, and serve that as soup or like in a little mug on the side. And then we will add tallow and sea salt to the cauliflower after mashing it up a little bit like mashed potatoes. It's delicious. This actually, if you think you don't like cauliflower, this might change your mind. I was surprised, but the by simmering it, we really take a lot of the taste out, but it's still we're still getting all the nutrients in there. So that kind of harsh bite that cauliflower has that a lot of people don't like when we simmer, that seems to reduce quite a bit. So I'm just gonna add some water to cover and we'll bring this up to a boil. And we'll add our salt later after mashing. There we go. We'll just boil that in there. So now our cauliflower has cooked and you'd use a slotted spoon if you have a slotted spoon um, to do this. I apparently don't own a slotted spoon. And so we're just gonna put our cauliflower that is, you can see how soft it is. It's well boiled in that stock. in here and we're gonna make our mashed cauliflower so we're just gonna mash it up you can use a potato masher if you want but this will because it's well boiled it will mash really easily with just a fork or a spoon you can even puree it with an immersion blender if you want to get all the lumps out this is kind of like our pretend mashed potatoes and it's really delicious with the fat either from your chicken stock or today I'm using duck fat. Um, this is Epic brand, which they really meticulously source their animal products. It's something I like. You can buy a case of three different fats. There's beef tallow, duck fat, and pork lard. I'm just gonna add some of that duck fat in like we would add butter, just a little bit. Sprinkle some sea salt. And then I think you'll really like this and it can be as smooth or as lumpy as you would like it to be. So there you go, just give it a taste. It's, see if it needs some more salt. It's pretty good. It's good like that. This is one of my favorite. We do this even when we're not on intro. Um, just the boiled cauliflower in the stock, add some healthy fats and some sea salt and it's a delicious side dish and something that you'll enjoy while you're on intro. And then for the stock that we cooked it in, we wanna go ahead and enjoy that on the side to make sure we are getting those amino acids. And you can go ahead and add your garlic and your sauerkraut juice just right to that stock to make sure you're getting those probiotics and that sulfur containing antibacterial garlic.
Welcome to day seven, where we're going to introduce raw egg yolk, something that you are gonna absolutely love. It'll make your yellow squash soup really nice and creamy. I'm gonna show you how to do that recipe now, and you're gonna be surprised at how much you love having that raw egg yolk stirred into your cup of soup. So now I'm gonna take that summer squash soup that we made the other day, and I'm gonna show you how to add an egg yolk to it. So we're just gonna pour the hot soup in here, then when we introduce egg yolks, we're going to separate the egg and just pop that yolk right in there and stir it up a little bit. So this is a good farm fresh egg and I did rinse it off. Um, it was from the farm and it hadn't been washed yet. And so when we're using raw eggs, if you want to use store eggs for most of your stuff, um, then that's fine. I do that too. I try to buy organic from the store. But when we're eating them raw, to reduce our risk of salmonella to pretty much nothing. Healthy chickens have like one one hundredth of the incidences of salmonella as factory farm chickens do. It's really not a risk at all. Um, so anyways, this is what we are doing. We're gonna separate the yolk. Oops. And then you can see I broke my yolk. Anyways, I broke my yolk. If you didn't and it's still in yolk form, just use a fork and um, break it up a little bit and it'll go into the soup better. So here, I just like to whisk it and kind of pour it in as I'm whisking with a fork. And it just, it really makes a creamy, delicious soup. And I like to do this in that yellow summer squash soup because if you're a little bit squeamish about eating raw egg yolk like I used to be, um, you can kind of just tell yourself it's not yellow from the egg, it's yellow from the summer squash. And so just mix that in there. Try to get the rest of that out. Mix it up. And you can taste it and add salt if you want to, but here is your summer squash soup with your egg. And if you are just introducing egg yolk after a few days of not having it, a few days on intro, you're gonna think it's the best tasting thing ever. So go ahead and do check with one yolk today, and then tomorrow, if you tolerated that yolk well, um, adding a egg yolk to each cup of soup, along with your sauerkraut juice that you're still doing, and your crushed garlic that you're still doing, um, that's a great way to get really easily absorbed nutrition for your body. Our bodies absorb that yolk, the protein and the amino acids in the egg yolk, they absorb, it absorbs a lot better than in the white which is why we do the yolk first.